everyone and welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Thursday, July 15th, 2021, and this is episode 187. My name is Carol. I am known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry, and I'm coming to you from my home in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, which is just a little ways east of Vancouver. I hope you've all had a good week. Um, Mine's been pretty good. The weather has cooled off a little, which is a welcome change. Uh, but unfortunately, the fire situation in BC continues to be dire. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the episode. Um, once again, I have a fan in the room or in the doorway of this room to keep me cool. It is late afternoon and the sun comes in that window right over there. And while the weather is cooler, it is not cool by any stretch of the imagination. So hopefully again, that that's not too distracting. So I'm actually recording a day earlier than I had planned. I thought I would get a jump on things so that even if this episode didn't manage to get up until tomorrow, at least the bulk of the um, preparation will have been done as far as recording and editing and such. So um, I have a finished project to share with you. I have a three works in progress, one of which is new, and then I have uh, something that's up and coming. So get yourself comfortable, grab something to drink, grab your knitting, and uh, let's get on with it, shall we? So my finished project, which I was really hoping I would have done by this week, is the whoops, Silver River Shawl. I did make sure I had the right name. My notes are over there. Silver River Shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And this is the second shawl in the Handmade Sock Society 5. And I have knit it from two colors of Black Cat Custom Yarn Lingtron 400, so called because it is a sparkly yarn. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking that up. And um, I've used this color, which is called Frogger, and then this one is Starry Night, which I thought was very apt for a shawl that was inspired by the Milky Way. So I'm going to start at this end so you can see. It is um, a very shallow crescent shawl, and it alternates these sections of star stitch with these short row sections of garter stitch. So if you see on the ends, they're very skinny. And then if you bring them over, you see how wide they get. And so this little garter section is off center. Uh, it's, if you hold the shawl sort of straight along its edge, you can see how the stripes go in a sort of a diagonal. So I'll start here as promised and show you. So you can see it has a pico bind off, which I think is a nice, simple uh, edging for this shawl. Really like how the star stitch really pops after everything has been blocked. You can see it's a fairly long shawl. Um, oops, caught on my watch there. I would say it would be most um, easily worn as a, well, I guess you could wear it as a traditional shawl. It's pretty long, but it certainly can sit around your shoulders like that. The ends are pretty long though, <laughs> if you do that. So I think this shawl is the best worn kind of scarf-like. So crazy doing this um, on a warm day like this, but I am not going to be keeping it on. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job, did I? But you get the idea. As I said, the ends are quite long. That's well past my waist. I think the uh, design is really nice and um, I'm really happy with the yarns that I chose. Uh, it was quite an enjoyable knit. Um, by the time I was on the third stripe of the um, garter here, I was finding it was getting a bit long, but then 
surprisingly, this next section of Star Stitch went quite quickly, as did the ending. So it was kind of, I guess, the middle is where I felt like it was going on and on and not getting very far. But um, anyway, definitely enjoyed this pattern. And um, as I'd hoped, I finished it in time uh, for the new pattern, which I will share with you uh, after I show you all of my works in progress. So let's see. I have to say I've been intending to record all day and kind of was putting it off. So I did write out some really brief show notes, but then I just gathered everything in my project bags are sitting all over the place. Usually I have things sort of pulled out, and labels ready to show you and things. This week it's going to be more of a grab a bag, look inside, show you what's in there. I've got this. These are socks in my stuffy sock war bag that I got at Tote Yarn and Wool down in Washington State. And this is, this is a tangled mess is what it is. This yarn here, that label, is a Regia design line, the Arden and Carlos and Mountain and Fjords series. This is color 7028. And once again, I'm not attempting the, the name that it has. It's a Norwegian place name, I think, and I can't pronounce it. So you can see it's getting very low and that must mean I'm getting close to being finished. Um, let's see. My yarn is wrapped around this needle here. There definitely is a downside to not being better prepared. I uh, beg your indulgence as you watch me do things like untangle yarn and stuff. I'm just going to see which one. This is the longer one. This sock is ready for the toe. So I have done, I'll slip it on the sock blocker here. I did at least remember to put my sock blockers over where I could reach them. So I did a um, 72 stitch sock. As you can see, it's from the top down, two millimeter needle, two by two ribbed cuff, a traditional heel flap and gusset, and I'll do my usual rounded toe. and. I've kind of gotten a jump on my gift knitting. These are for my brother-in-law's birthday near the end of November. So there you go. This has been really fun to knit up and just see how these different areas, especially here, they're kind of fun with the undulating patterns and things. So really like that. The second sock is only, I don't even know if it's even an inch less of the way there, so it's almost ready for its toe too. So as you can see, I've been knitting them concurrently on two needles. And so I will just sort of do the cup on one, do the cup on the other, knit a little ways on one, knit a little ways on the other, and I just continually work back and forth so that they're done at about the same time. And then there's no second sock syndrome. I often do that when I have a um, self-striping or self-patterning yarn. I don't always do that when I'm working with, I'm going to reach out of frame here, I um, don't always do that when I'm working with a uh, patterned sock or just a hand-dyed yarn. So it might not have been obvious unless I told you, but I am re-recording the following two segments. I have recorded the entire episode and while I was editing it, I realized that there was something wrong with the file that contained my discussion about the rest of my works in progress and my new up and coming project. So it's back to the craft room for take two and hopefully uh, this one goes well. So my next work in progress, I showed you the pattern for this last week. It's the Scribbly Gum Socks by Helen Stewart. And this is the final pattern in the Handmade Sock Society 4. As you can see, it's got a really interesting lace pattern running up the front of the sock. So um, 
as I do when I don't really know what something is, I turn to Google and I learned that uh, what scribbly gum is, is eucalyptus trees that have really interesting patterns on their bark that's caused by the larvae of a certain kind of moth. And so um, I use that as inspiration when choosing my yarn for this project. So originally I've been sort of looking at sort of brownie and rusty colored yarns. But then I came across this picture. I thought it was just really cool. This is from finestartamerica.com give credit where credit's due. It's a poster. But isn't that cool? So I have this yarn in my stash that I thought would be perfect. It is this skein uh, from Solbird Yarn and Fibers. And this is the Snow Bunting colorway and I got this as part of a yarn box from uh, Knit City. And so um, it's just a sock base, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. But I just thought it had that light background with the gray and black lines through it and then these little bits of that rusty color. So I thought it'd be perfect. And I am really happy with how it's knitting up so far. So I'll show you the back first. The back is just plain. I love how it's knitting up. It's not uh, pooling at all. It's just nice, just very nice way it's all distributing the colors. Um, and there's the front. I'm gonna slip this on a sock blocker so you can see that lace pattern opened up a little bit. Isn't it pretty? It has these um, right and left one by one cables running up each side and then this really interesting lace pattern. Um, I am not doing left cables and right cables, however, I am just doing right twist and left twist because that's a whole lot easier than having to actually remove a stitch off the needle to do a cable stitch. Um, I did the same with my uh, curling mist socks and curling mist shawl. And it made it knit up a whole lot faster. So yes, loving these. Um, I'm doing this 64 stitch size, two millimeter needle. So um, those are coming along nicely and I've got that in my, oops. One of my two Canada themed bags that I made. So um, this one and then my next project is in another. Since uh, Canada Day is on July 1st, I decided throughout the month I'm going to store my projects in my Canada themed bags. So the next work in progress I have is a shawl that I've shown you before, but not for a couple weeks. It's One and Done by Casapinka. It's hard to tell on here, but it's basically a ribbed shawl. And then after you reach a certain point, you drop one stitch every second sort of section of ribbing and it ladders down. So you have all these horizontal lines in between these columns of stitches. And then you do the uh, border and then a little edging here. So I'm also knitting this out of a yarn from Songbird Yarn and Fibers. My only two skeins. Hopefully not my last. I really like it. Uh, so this one, whoops, this one here is Anna's Hummingbird. Oops, I didn't cover my face. That's one of the kinds of hummingbirds we get around here. And despite this photo, Despite the color of this yarn, their feathers are more like um, kind of a crimsony color. But I love this hot pink, it's really fun. I have a few clothes that are in this green shade, so I have something uh, already that will match this shawl, which will be more like a scarf. Um, and I'm just trying to find out. 
there's from the top. It looks really weird till you actually drop the stitches and block it. Just as just you can see, it's just all this tight ribbing, but it's I think it's quite fun. I think it'll be nice when all the stitches are dropped. I don't mind how the uh, colors are knitting up. There's a little bit of pooling and stuff, but it's a fun knit. It's just fun to see how the colors stack up in different areas or form these kind of stripes because you're always increasing, you know, there's no real repetition as to how it's knitting up. Uh, so uh, this little stitch marker, whoops, came with the, <laughs> doesn't want to stay that way. Little stubborn owl. That came with the yarn. <laughs> so I'm using it to mark the beginning of each pattern repeat, which are divided by these uh, four rows of garter stitch. So um, yeah, this has been, I picked this up again after I finished the uh, other shawl. But now I'm probably gonna be putting it down again because um, I now have Helen Stewart's new shawl pattern to uh, begin. So that is my up and coming project this week. So I'm just looking, here it is. So here it is. It is the third shawl from the handmade, no, <laughs> third shawl from the Shawl Society 5. I always mix that up. It's called Wild Bees Wrap. Uh, unfortunately, my printing doesn't look so good. It's not striped exactly like that but you can see it's a very graphic shawl a very um non-traditional construction you start out with this big uh square in the middle and then you work out to each side so that it will look like that when it's done so if you look up closely there's this wild bees lace pattern and that goes in the first two squares and then the rest of these stripes have another little lace pattern you can see they're just eyelets and I can see there's other patterns along the way so despite how this looks there's actually two shades of blue in this sample a light and a dark and then this golden honey color um, personally I was thinking I would like it so that it the two shades that form these sections, I'd like them to be a little bit more distinct. So I have that in mind as I'm going. So here's sort of my um, inspiration for find, you know, uh, putting together colors for this uh, shawl. I have two different sets of possibilities. It all started with this one. This is a, a skein I recently acquired from Ancient Arts, and it is called um, The Bee's Knees. So my initial thought was, let's see if I can find some yarns that would match this colorway, because I thought it would be fun to use a colorway that had a reference to bees in it. Um, but looking through it, I had kind of a bright pink. I was looking at maybe oh, brown or something. It just wasn't working so I resigned myself to the fact that okay this was not going to work so I set it aside however I do have this colorway that is actually quite a similar colorway and it was in um, a bag in one of my bins back here next to this colorway so this is a Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock, as you can see. This is the Rosé Day colorway. And then this is a skein from Lichen and Lace. Uh, it's their, it's just their sock, 80% uh, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. This is the Day Lily colorway. So there's their label. And they go together really well, and yet are different obviously this one is much more saturated. So then I had bought this skein to use with this set of 
Mini Skeins Party of Five set from Sweet Georgia. So I thought because there's all sorts of stripes and things in this shawl, and because this goes well with it, so does this. I'm thinking about using these in some combination. Now I need two of my skeins need to be a full 400 yards. Uh, this one I've used a little bit of it. I think I might have done that in my, um, uh, what do you call it? My mitered squares sock yarn blanket. Cause I only have, I think about 85% of the skein left. So, but then this has more than 400 yards in it. So I feel like I would be okay to, um, you know, to make this work. So that's one possibility. And what I like about this possibility is it's kind of along the same vein as my original idea for, for a colorway. So that's, that's one. The other is I have had four colorways of hedgehog fibers set aside for a shawl for a long time. My original colors that I had were uh, Birthday Cake and Monarch. And I knit some socks uh, with these colorways. Obviously the main color was this Birthday Cake. And then at some point I picked up two skeins that I thought would go well with them. There was this one, which is Hawk. As you can see, it's got the orange in it and has the purple there. And then also, um, this is Bramble. So again, it's got some pink and purple and orange. And then these two both have um, green in them. So again, obviously I don't have full skeins of these, but because there's striping and things going on, I feel like I could make this work. I'd have to decide which skein to make with the uh, lace so that it shows up probably this orange, but maybe this purple would work for that. Um, obviously I have more of the orange. So those are my two possibilities. Um, I'm going to play and just, just do up some sampling and just decide which combinations I like best once I start knitting them into the shawl because uh, it's one thing to picture them, it's another thing sometimes to um, see them done. So, um, here's another, some other photos to show you. It's really an interesting, I always love non-traditional construction. So I'm just anxious for the very fact that this is just putting a shawl together in a whole different way. So I am very excited uh, to play with this. So that's the end of the re-recording. And now I will hand you back over to my original recording. As I said earlier, I have had a pretty good week. Uh, just after I got last week's episode up and running, I went over to our daughter's place and picked up our six-year-old granddaughter for the weekend. So she has been just wanting a sleepover so badly for so long and now that we're vaccinated and she's been out of school for a couple of weeks and our COVID cases in BC have dropped so much, we decided it was, was safe to go ahead with it. So uh, first stop was the grocery store. I, let her pick out a special cereal and snack and something special to drink. And then we, we headed home, uh, got her all settled in. She unpacked her backpack, put all her clothes away in the drawers in the dresser in the spare room. She was really psyched because she got to sleep in the room that had the big bed this time. 
Um, so then shortly after that, Cameron came home from work and we went out for dinner. And then the next morning he had to go to town again for um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So she and I just hung out together all weekend. Um, we had some smoky skies and it was bothering my breathing. So I was trying to stay inside as much as possible. So we didn't really go out and do things. We just stayed in and hung out, watched some movies, um, played some board games. Uh, she played a lot of Barbies. Uh, we had sort of inherited her older sister's things once she had stopped playing with Barbies. And so there's been a big bin that she's had access to for quite a while with lots of clothes and dolls and things. Uh, but I had some smaller bins with some Barbie furniture and some other dolls and accessories, a few clothes put away. So I thought this would be a good time to bring those out. So they were all new to her and she enjoyed going through those and sort of seeing all these new things. Uh, it's quite funny, she just loves the shoes. She doesn't change their clothes very often, but she changes their shoes all the time. Um, I think she's gonna probably have a very large shoe collection when she is older and can buy them for herself. Um, we also played restaurant. I thought I'd show you this menu that she wrote up. I love the sort of creative spelling at this age and uh, face it, English is not an easy language to learn and things are not spelled the way they sound and things don't always sound the way they're spelled. So uh, obviously this is an egg. You can see the A-E-G, cake, popcorn, meat, donut, spell that one down. This was cupcake, chocolate pudding, and that's what she'd had for dessert at the restaurant, and then ice cream. So, um, yeah, just a really great weekend. Um, Saturday lunchtime, picked up some pizza to take home to uh, share with her older brother. So I uh, had lunch over there with them and then headed back to a very quiet house. <laughs> uh, I not sure how many times I heard grandma uh, over the course of the weekend, but it was a lot. But um, it was music to my ears. I just had just a lovely time with her and looking forward to having her uh, 10 year old brother this weekend. I'll pick him up tomorrow afternoon and kind of do a lot of the same kinds of things. Uh, I believe Cameron will be home those, this weekend though. He's not slated to go work out of town until next Monday, I think it is, uh, for a couple of days. So I'm sure he'll enjoy spending time with him too. Uh, so those are all good things. Unfortunately, our fire, in, fire situation here in British Columbia just, um, just continues to be just out of control. I uh, thought to give you an idea, this is our uh, fire map at the moment. All those red dots are fires, the green dots are fires that have been put out. Then you can see that some are quite a bit larger, indicated by flames. So as you can see, we've had 127 just this week of over 300 fires burning. So uh, the thing is, is that these situations tend to change very rapidly. And yesterday, uh, there were evacuation alerts and notices uh, issued for some areas to the north and to the south of where my mom lives. And one of the highways was closed. And, uh, my sisters and I are all watching this and with, you know, feeling very concerned. Uh, several years ago, my mom did have to be evacuated for uh, several weeks from her home because of a forest fire that was threatening the town where she lived. And we're all just looking at all these fires burning basically all around her and worried about uh, an evacuation alert or order coming and not having a way 
to get out of town. So um, I, just to give you an idea again, so this right about uh, here. That's where my mom lives. All these red areas are evacuation orders. All the yellow areas are evacuation alerts. So I know I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer. So I know I've talked to you about the wildfire near our cabin. So uh, you can see right here, there's Clinton. That's where my mom lives. And you can see it says Edge Hills Provincial Park. And our property backs onto this park. And where you see this evacuation zone end, just here at the other end of the lake, is where our property is. This fire, thankfully, does not have any evacuation orders anymore. All of the area is still under alert, though. But you can see this large area to the west or east of my mom, this area north, and then south. And this is where one of the highways runs that takes her out of town. So yesterday, um, I gave her a call late afternoon, early evening. And at first she said that she didn't want to leave unless there was an evacuation alert uh, that went into place. And then the more we talked and the more she realized how quickly things were changing um, and especially with continued hot dry weather in the forecast and winds uh, she decided that yes maybe she better be prudent and leave before they were put on alert and so uh, this morning one of my sisters and her husband went up to get her and bring her home I haven't heard yet but they're either should be back now or shortly so I feel for her, it's hard to leave your home. Um, and even though they're not in any immediate danger, there's always that possibility. And of course, it's she has things that she is involved in up there and things she wants to get done. And so I know she really didn't want to leave, but I'm also very thankful that she's a very practical person. And... Um, can can say yeah you know what this makes sense she doesn't drive herself she is 84 this year um, she's never had a driver's license so she's dependent on other people and uh, her very good friend that she's sort of on her uh, part of her family's evacuation plan uh, they're they're not in a position to leave at this moment and so she just decided that's probably the prudent thing to do. So I'm very grateful for that and look forward to seeing her um, in the next, uh, probably in the next couple days. She'll, depending on how long she has to be down here for, um, she will sort of stay at various people's homes the way she did before. Maybe to put that in context too, I will just give you a sense of where she lives compared to where I live. So <laughs> she's up there. This is the Lytton fire that I have talked about. And then we are right down here. So I think it's about uh, 300 kilometers, 250, 300 kilometers. So that just gives you a sense, put it in perspective. So my something good, uh, as of about seven o'clock this evening, I will be fully vaccinated. I will have uh, achieved my two weeks following my shot. So that's a very good uh, feeling indeed. Uh, and Cameron, as of Sunday, will be fully vaccinated. Um, our numbers in BC have been extremely good as far as our vaccination rates. Now, uh, approximately 80% of eligible people, 12 and up in BC, have had their first dose, 
and about 49% have had their second dose. So um, that's great news. Our COVID numbers have remained low. Uh, our weekly average this week was in the 40s uh, per 40 cases, 40-ish cases per day, 40-something cases per day. And um, we went almost a week without a death, unfortunately. One person did die uh, sometime between yesterday and today. Uh, but it's all very encouraging news. Our province is looking much more like normal. Um, I'm just going to check that might be the little note to say that my mom's arrived. I have a feeling. Yes, they are home. Uneventful trip. So that is good news. And we're welcome to come over one and all so i have a feeling tonight we'll be heading over to her place to see our mom this will be our first get together with each other because we're all now fully vaccinated so um that should be good there's always a good thing to come out of a bad thing if you look hard enough <sighs> and on that happy note i think i am going to say goodbye so um I am not sure what's happening next week. Cameron is off on Wednesday. He's going to drive me into my appointment for my breathing test. I'll be very interested to see what that reveals. Um, he was talking about taking the next couple of days off and then with his weekend, that would give him a, you know, sort of five days off in a row. He's not sure if he's gonna be able to manage that. So I would say if he's, off. I definitely won't be recording next week. If he ends up working Thursday and Friday, I most likely will. Part of it, I'm sure, will depend on what the situation is with my mom, whether she's staying here by then or somewhere else. So I can just tell you probably over the next several weeks, uh, my uh, recording schedule is going to be um, unknown i guess is the best way unpredictable unknown so uh be sure if you don't want to miss an episode to uh hit the button for subscribing and for notifications so that you uh will get a little bell i think it is when or you hit the little bell you get a notification when there's a new episode i'm never good at remembering those things uh so Thank you all for watching. I hope you are well and safe where you are. Uh, I know the Western United States is in the same state as British Columbia with uh, that whole north south area of the continent. We're all in the same boat with uh, hot dry weather and uh, lightning storms and unfortunately to um, careless people or in some cases people deliberately setting fires. I just cannot wrap my head around that one but there have been um, a couple of different people that have been caught this week doing that. Uh, several different people and it just why? Um, okay I was gonna leave on a happy note so let me just say have a great week and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.